Do you want to know the secret ingredient behind this market's incredible rally from the bottom last year? I figured it out. It's the short sellers. sellers. When the bears bet against the stock, they borrow shares, then sell them. But if that bet goes wrong, they're forced to buy the stock buy, back. Buy, buy. And that buying is like rocket fuel for stocks. Oh, we got a bunch of examples today. Even as the averages were pretty sedate. Dow inching up 15 points. That's me advancing 0.30%. NASDAQ gaining 0.35%. Just like ordinary investors will throw in the towel and sell when their favorite stock gets obliterated, short sellers throw in the towel when their favorite targets go up too much. The invisible cover of their defeat is evident every day in this market. And it's something we don't talk about enough. How the heck do you think we've managed to go six straight months without a 5% decline? Capitulating short sellers are like a fifth column supporting the bulls, even if they're not doing it by choice. Most of the time when someone goes short, they have a thesis about overvaluation, along with a sense that the situation is very precarious. I mean, they, they want fear. They want danger. You need more conviction to go short because if you're wrong, your losses could be unlimited. Of course, you get a bad piece of news, maybe a shortfall, maybe a scandal, and boom, the shorts clean up. When you layer on a hideous balance sheet struggling under a mountain of debt, well, it's even better for the shorts because you get the possibility of a total breakdown. The stock could go to zero. But thanks to a new generation of investors, investors who treat short sellers as prey, we've got a very peculiar market. Take AMC. Honestly, this movie chain, theater chain, I mean, it has no business being solid uh, after over a year and a half of COVID. It owes a ton of debt. There's little demand for its product. And the interim competition keeps getting fierce, as we'll hear from Disney later tonight, which is cleaning up. And judging by the extremely positive reaction, by the way, to an insanely good quarter from Disney, it may too be a benefactor of a short squeeze going bad, both tonight and then tomorrow. Ah. Eight months ago, AMC was an obvious short candidate. Betting against this thing seemed like shooting fish in a barrel. Then Wall Street bets came along and started ganging up against the shorts, pushing stocks like AMC higher in order to force the bears to buy them back. <gasps> and that allowed CEO Adam Aaron to raise $5 billion in inflated common stock, at least where a typical heavily indebted company stock with no revenues might be enough to stave off bankruptcy for the next five years. He saw the meme stock formula and he decided to do everything he could to embrace and harness, if not love, the power of these newfound ape traders, as he calls them. Well, they call themselves that and he called them that on the call. Now, every time a bunch of shorts try to go after AMC, they get smacked down by the legion of bear bombers. The thing is, this action makes no sense to most of the veterans who've been in business for a long time. The analysts are paid fortunes, right? Fortunes to predict the directions of the stocks they cover but they're almost uniformly negative about AMC. Several of them are still using $1 price targets for this $33 stock, and their conviction has not been deterred, not at all, by the better-than-expected quarter the company reported this week. Some of that's because they think the Delta variant will be the, finally the thing that crushes AMC. Some of that is because they look at the balance sheet and said, who the heck would ever want to own this stock? To me, their view is nuts and pathetic. See, AMC is no longer trading based on the fundamentals, and anyone who tries to pretend otherwise is only fooling themselves. When you have a group of shareholders who, when faced with imminent bankruptcy, simply buy the stock even more voraciously, can you imagine what happens if anything good happens at AMC? Oh, they're never going to let go. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.